Welcome to the Jersey Magazine. I'm your host, Jim Monahan. And my guest this morning is the Vice President, Communications and Marketing for the American Cancer Society, Donna Galata. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, Jim. Thank you for having us on. You're welcome. With October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I wanted to talk to you about different events that are going on, including one in particular that happens next Sunday. It is the American Cancer Society's annual Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk uh, at Middlesex College. Now, I know Making Strides is the largest network of breast cancer events in the country. What else does this organization do, Donna? Well, I'm so glad you asked me that, Jim, because a lot of people don't know that the American Cancer Society is the largest source of nonprofit breast cancer research funding and cancer research funding in general. So uh, our researchers are working on all different projects, such as how to stop more aggressive, harder to treat uh, triple negative breast cancer. Uh, We're working how to stop breast cancer metastasis. We're working on how to close the gap and the inequity between uh, black women and white women, because we know black women are more likely to die of breast cancer. Those are just some of the projects, but we also provide uh, early detection. Uh, We have a 24 hour helpline at 800-227-2345. We provide information, answer questions on breast cancer on our website, cancer.org. And we have a number of patient support programs that I can tell you about. You just mentioned uh, breast cancer metastasis. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about, I saw here that only 7% of breast cancer research money goes towards metastatic breast cancer. Now, is that because we catch it so early or is there another factor involved in that? I think that it is a much greater percentage of our research that goes toward fighting metastatic breast cancer. Um, but we, uh, we have made tremendous strides in the last few decades. Breast cancer mortality has gone down 41% uh, since 1991. And a lot of that is uh, due in part to early detection. Uh, We recently just launched a program to help people get screened because we know that so many women put off their mammograms uh, last year and even pre-pandemic, only 63% of women were up to date on their mammograms. Uh, So we are working to encourage people to get back to mammograms. And if you're uninsured and you're not sure where to find a low cost or a free mammogram, you can call us at 800-227-2345 and we can point you in the right direction. A couple of weeks ago here on Jersey Magazine, I had Ed Randall on. Ed is a longtime friend, and he's been working on uh, prostate cancer awareness for men. And men, and I am very guilty of this, we are notorious for not wanting to go to the doctor. Don, I can't tell you how bad it has to be for me to finally say, okay, I'm going to a doctor. Why do you think the difference is between men and women with that? I'm not sure about that. It is true. I know in my own life, I have to remind my husband who uh, has improved about going for his own screenings, but it's very important to know which screenings are right for you, uh, depending on your age and your risk factors. Um, you can find out more about your, your own risk at uh, cancer.org slash get screened. Uh, colon cancer screening is also very important, uh, you know, for men and women and, uh, we're trying to really encourage people at age 45 to go for colon cancer screening too. You mentioned uh, the age of 45 for that. And I know women over the age of 40, I believe are recommended to have an annual mammogram. Why that age? Why 40 and 45 that those mid forties areas, Donna? Well, we recommend that women starting at age 40 at average risk, talk to their doctor about screening and then begin screening every year at age 45. Uh, The reason for that is that, uh, Early, younger than that, breasts tend to be more dense, uh, so the, the test is not as accurate, uh, but it's still important to know your body and go in for your checkups. What are some of the things that women can do to reduce the risk? I know you can't, there's no 100%, well, if I do this, I won't get it, but what are some of the things that women can do to reduce the risk of breast cancer? To reduce your risk, uh, we recommend uh, eating a, a healthy diet, a plant-based diet, to stay physically active. And we have guidelines for nutrition and physical activity uh, on our website, cancer.org. It's important to know your family history, uh, talk with your family, your your aunts, your mother, your grandmother about family history and know your risk. uh, And then make sure that you you see your doctor regularly. 
Donna Gulotta is our guest this morning on the Jersey Magazine. She's the Vice President of Communications and Marketing for the American, American Cancer Society. I mentioned Ed Randall, and we were talking about prostate cancer a few weeks ago, and the subject came up of when a doctor says to you, you have cancer, and usually when you hear those three words, you have cancer, you don't hear anything else after that. Um, it's probably the second time back to the doctor. I know my own mom was diagnosed many years ago with breast cancer, and I wasn't the one diagnosed. But when she called and said to me, I have cancer, I, I didn't hear a thing afterwards. It was probably a conversation a day later, like, all right, mom, what did the doctor say? What recommendations do you have? What advice do you have for women who hear those words, you have cancer for the first time? I think the experience that you just described, you know, we hear very often, it's a common reaction. Uh, we do recommend having someone with you when you visit your doctor, when you're hearing the results of your test or your biopsy. Um, that's why I think our, our helpline is so important and our website that, you know, after that doctor visit and you have questions, doesn't matter what time of the day or night, if you call us, you'll get a live person on the other end of the line who can help you work through all the questions you may wanna take back to your doctor to ask questions about your diagnosis. Um, you know, some of the other support programs that we have, we have a one-to-one, -one, uh, we're talking about breast cancer today, but we have a program called Reach to Recovery, uh, which helps women to meet with and talk with um, another breast cancer survivor uh, after they've been diagnosed. We have a uh, help with transportation to treatment. We have help with uh, our Hope Lodges. Those are free places to stay, more than 30 Hope Lodges across the country that uh, if you need to travel far from home for a special treatment, uh, you're able to stay at our Hope Lodges free of charge. Uh, those are just a few of the programs that we uh, have for patient support. We're talking with Donna Gulotta this morning. She's Vice President of Communications and Marketing for the American Cancer Society and October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I specifically mentioned the Making Strides Walk next Sunday at Middlesex College, but there's some other events going on a little bit later on today, as a matter of fact. Tell our listeners about those, Donna. Yeah, it's not too late for uh, today, which is uh, October 17th, for you to join our events uh, at makingstrideswalk.org. Uh, it's free to register. We are asking everyone to register, but we have events happening on the 17th in Parsippany, in Newark, and in Point Pleasant. Next week, uh, the 24th, we'll be at Middlesex County College with our Making Strides Walk. And then the following Saturday, October 30th, we will be at the Making Strides of Bergen County in MetLife Stadium. Uh, they're all great events, great experiences. We've taken a lot of precautions to keep people safe uh, with social distance, distancing, we've made some adjustments in our route uh, just to ensure that everyone is kept safe. And then we also offer a Making Strides on the Go app. If you're more comfortable walking at home or in your neighborhood with your family or friends anytime, just register at makingstrideswalk.org and uh, register to fundraise and you can ask for the app. I was going to ask you about what you've done in light of COVID and everything still that we're going through right now. And that sounds like a great way to do it. If you do have some reservations about it, uh, I know some people who have done different walks for various things and they've done them on their own. And it's a great way to do it. You can contribute and still feel safe if that's a, a, you know, a concern to you as it probably should be. Yeah, so what? we want to take you know every precaution to keep, especially cancer survivors who are in treatment who may feel more comfortable, you know, walking at home with, with family. But we do, um, we are going to be celebrating our survivors this year. We'll also have a tribute garden uh, with pinwheels to remember those that we've lost. Um, and you know, if you don't want to walk, you can make a donation anytime at makingstrideswalk.org. And once someone signs up to walk, Donna, what's the best way that they can go about fundraising for their walk? We can give you all kinds of ideas for fundraising. People do like small events, little parties in their homes. People sell things. People have a go pink day at their place of employment where maybe everyone decides to wear pink and gives $5 or $10 to your team. Uh, but we can provide you with a lot of fundraising ideas on our website. And again, that website is Making Strides Walk uh, walk.org. And you gave out a toll-free number before. Uh, repeat that, please, Donna. Yeah, our helpline, we're available 24 hours a day, every day of the year at 800-227-2345.
So there are a number of events that you can participate participate in to today and then next Sunday in Middlesex and then the following Saturday at uh, Meadowlands. So Donna, thank you so much for uh, spending time with us this morning here on the Jersey Magazine. I know this is of vital importance to our listeners. Thank you so much, Jim.